Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are taking a look today at the Toronto Maple Leafs as they are back in the Stanley Cup playoffs. You can punch your ticket to the dance as the Leafs are back in the playoffs. So we'll be going over really the history of the Leafs of making the postseason and I know you guys love when I make this video. Um, especially the Leaf fans out there, why this team has been so successful, why they're making the playoffs this year. And we're going to kind of take a guess as to what could happen in the postseason. Do the, the Leafs finally get over the hump? And we'll talk about that today. So for the sixth season in a row, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is a really good stretch for the Maple Leafs. This is a team that everybody said, yeah, this is a good hockey team. And I think a lot of people, you know, it, it hasn't been a question during the regular season. I think Leaf fans have gotten to the point where they're saying, all right, we know we're a good regular season team. We could win the President's Trophy. We could win the Atlantic Division. They brutalized and completely murdered the North Division last year, which had teams like Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, they beat all those teams up, like, convincingly. And then comes the playoffs, and they lose in the first round once again. This has been a problem for the Leafs now for almost two decades. You look at the last time they won a playoff series, they have not gone to the second round of the playoffs since 2004. That's right, 2004. It's been 18 years so think about somebody that just got, you know, their full license. That's how long. Like, it has been that long for someone that turned, you know, was born in 2004. They now have their driver's license. That's how long it's been since the, the Leafs have won a playoff series. Um, like I said, their sixth consecutive playoff season. Really good to see that consistency. We knew, again, we knew that. We knew that this team couldn't make the postseason and consistently. Um what what's the reason that they're doing so well this year? Well, it's kind of easy. I mean, you look at their top guys, Tavares, Marner, and Lord help the league. Whoever has to deal with taming Toronto's Austin Matthews in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, God bless them. That is going to be a very difficult task, especially with the way Austin Matthews has played this season. He has been so good. And I, you know, I'm not meaning to, you know, you know, kind of gloss him over, but like he has been really good for the Leafs. And again, when you're scoring, what is it, 52 goals in 51 games, that's pretty damn impressive. And that's kind of what we're looking at right now with Austin Matthews. Um, you look at the team stats overall 47 19 and 6 is the record, 100 points. That's second in the Atlantic Division, only behind the Florida Panthers, who clinched earlier this week. Um, Sheldon Keefe has done a very nice job here in Toronto this season. There's been some questionable things along the way, but again, when you're a hockey market like Toronto, you know, it's kind of like the Yankees in baseball. Just every little thing is scrutinized or picked apart. Why is he playing in the top six? Why is Nylander on the third line tonight? All that stuff just gets so, it, it creates so much more controversy than is really needed necessarily. Um... But you look at their stats. So let's look at their, their stats from how they compare against the league. So their goals against, 221 goals against. That is the concerning thing for the Leafs. And that's been a problem for this Leafs team, really, for the past, you know, since um, we've seen Kyle Dubas kind of take over from Lou Lamorello. Uh, they are 17th in the NHL, which is actually the bottom half of the league. Again, when a league of 32 teams, 17th in that category, you are in the bottom half. So not a really good spot there for the Leafs in that in that category, but they've never been known for their defensive abilities. That's not their game. Their goals for, though, is only behind one other team. They are second in the NHL for goals for this season, which is 277 goals for this season. So the Leafs can score goals. That's not a problem for this team. They can score goals at will. And you look at some guys that are out of the lineup, it does hurt them. Uh, Andre Kasha has been out of the lineup with a concussion. That's not a good spot there. Peter Morazic, we know he went down with another groin injury. This is now 
twice in the past three years that Peter Morozik has gone down with a lower body injury and specifically groin. Uh, that's kind of concerning. And now Rasmus Sandin could be out for a couple of days. He has an undisclosed injury from at the end of March. So we're kind of in a spot now where the Leafs have a couple of guys out of the lineup, uh, but at least they're, they're depth guys, right? Obviously losing Kasha sucks, but hopefully he'll be back for the postseason. And you know what? It actually ends up being a good thing because now you start to see some of the young guys come into the lineup, uh, which has been, you know, a little bit refreshing, a little bit refreshing. Um, you know, you see guys like Nick Abruzzese, Ilya Labushkin, uh, you know, some of the newer guys like Giordano and, and Colin Blackwell, those are some good guys to see in their group. But obviously leading the way, he actually has 99 points this season. Good freaking Lord. Austin Matthews, 58 goals, 41 assists, 99 points. So that's what you're looking at with Austin Matthews. A plus 16, even, you know, which is even kind of crazier here you're looking at Mitch Marner he has 90 points this season and a plus 22 so a guy that's been known to not have the best plus minus numbers this season that is not the case he has done very well there and of course the rest of the core for John Tavares William Nylander and then guys like Riley Michael Bunting could still win rookie of the year this season he has been incredible he's got 57 points this season uh, but obviously, Austin Matthews, potentially to win the Rocket Richard, he's going to have 60 goals this year. He might even hit 70 by the end of this season. That like He has been just so freaking good. Um, it, it really is just mind-blowing. Not to mention, he was out with a wrist injury earlier this season. Remember that? He also missed games to suspension from the uh, Rasmus Dahlin situation at the Heritage Classic. You know, Austin Matthews is just, wow, he is on it this season. It is just it's crazy to watch how good he's been. Now you look at the goaltending. Now this is where things become a little more uh, controversial, if I could say in that sense. Um, so their best goaltender is obviously Jack Campbell, who has played 44 games this season. Um, and he's got a 9-12 save percentage and a 2.72 goals against average uh you know, Shalgren and Morazic have not really gotten close to those numbers. And, and God help Michael Hutchinson, uh, in his two games, he's really struggled as well. So, you know, you're looking at a situation where the Leafs really rely on Campbell. And if Campbell is not healthy for the playoffs, that would definitely be concerning. I think he'll be back. I don't think it's that big of a deal. You know, everybody was all excited for Shalgren, and, and that kind of has died off as they've kind of realized he is just another goalie here. Um, but I think what's really intriguing about the Leafs recently, uh, they have a couple of games here down the stretch that are going to be kind of big tests for them. Um, they play Washington later this week. They play the Islanders at home next Sunday. That's kind of a big game. And then they have the three final road games of this season. They play Tampa, Florida, Washington, and then their final home game of the regular season uh, on March 29th is against Boston in Toronto, so at Scotiabank. So there's a couple of big games here down the stretch, two against Washington, one against Boston, the Islanders, and then two road games down in Florida. You're looking at a pretty tough stretch here for the Leafs, and I think it's actually a good thing because they're actually going to be playing meaningful games and games that the other team is like they're going to be playoff uh, you know playoff-esque games I think that's only a benefit to them um you know they play Buffalo and Ottawa this week and Philly next week and Detroit the final week so they do have some cupcake games in there um but you can't even take those games lightly because those teams have nothing to lose right the Islanders Ottawa you know, those teams have nothing to lose so they're going to play tough on you and that might be even more incentive for the Leafs to make sure that they play good in those games. Again, you know Matthews is going to be motivated down the stretch. He's looking to have that really good 60-goal season, 100-plus um, point campaign overall. Uh, but the really the big thing is, can these guys produce in the postseason? And is their goaltending going to hold up? Because, you know, I hate to be doom and gloom here for my Leaf fans, but you look at the first two rounds of the playoffs, you are probably looking at playing Washington or Boston in the first round if you win the division, which let's say hypothetically they don't, right? But best case scenario, they win the division, they get Boston or Washington, which we know they haven't fared well against them in recent history. Now let's say they get the second or third spot in the division. 
Oh yeah, they have to play the the team going for a three P championship, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now the good thing is Tampa has not looked as good here down the stretch. They've actually looked a little bit, you know, sh- they've looked a little bit slow and slushy. I you know it looks like they're playing on slush when they're on the ice. I don't know what it is. Um, so that could actually be a benefit, but you're still playing a team that's won the last two Stanley Cups. That is not going to be an easy test, especially come playoff time. And you look at the weapons they've got on that team. It's really, I mean, I went to a game against the Lightning a couple weeks ago. I'm like, this is not, this is ridiculous. You have Stamkos, Hedman. I don't even know if Hedman was even out there, right? You might have had Sergachev out there. Point, Kucherov, Kalorin in front of the net. I mean, it's like, Jesus, what the hell are you supposed to do against that? But anyway... Um, and here's the other thing, and I've seen this with the Rangers in particular. The Rangers and the Leafs are very similar in this facet. They're extremely good on the power play. And this is where I think it ends up being a problem for them come playoff time. So you look at their power play numbers this season. Let's take a look. So their power play this season is almost 30%, which is actually pretty good, um, in terms of overall in the standings. And let me see where it actually lines up. Because what you have to remember here, yeah, and go figure, what did I just say? The two teams that benefit the most from this sort of thing are the Rangers and the Leafs. The Rangers have a 29% power play. The Rangers have a 26% power play. They score a lot of goals on the power play. Both these teams, not that they struggle on 5-on-5, but they don't score as many goals 5-on-5 as they do on the power play. That's fine. You could score on the power play. You're great when you need to. The problem is... Come playoff time, you know the whistles go away once we get into the playoffs, and that could end up hurting these teams. I think, like I said, specifically the Rangers and Leafs. And again, everybody's going to say, oh, you're an Islander fan, so you're going to say that, whatever. You could say whatever you want. Listen, the playoffs are going to dictate that, and you'll see it for yourself. But what you're looking at is if they, if you rely too much on your power play, that could end up being a hindrance because, again... Come playoff time, the whistles go away, there's not as many power plays and penalties being taken, that could end up hurting you. And when you're not getting that constant momentum from super boost, power play time, and stuff like that, you have to find other ways to get momentum. That's going to be Reeves driving Sidney Crosby or Malkin into the boards, or Jake Muzzin hitting some guy into the corner. That's what it's going to have to be, but they have not played that way up to this point, so it makes you wonder... Come playoff time, when the game changes a little, will they be able to adapt? And that's really what I'm looking at here with the Leafs, is I do have that little bit of concern in the back of my head. We do know the history of this team. They, have I mean, talk about a choke city. I mean, the Leafs have really struggled in the postseason. Listen, you can hate that comment all you want, but, I mean, you look at what they've done the past couple years. They had a 3-1 lead last year against the Montreal Canadiens of all freaking teams and they lose that one in seven games. And they were dominant in that game. They were up three. Actually, no. They were down three nothing in that game six. Right? And and game five. Game five, they were down three nothing. They came all the way back. They dominated in overtime. And one turnover. And the Habs won that game. And, and that was it from there. And then, yes, very cock and Yemi. And Suzuki. And um, Caulfield took over. And Corey Perry, of course to win that series so the Leafs listen I want to be confident I want to say the Leafs are going to go on a deep playoff run but you have to get past the first round and I think if the Leafs get past the first round they will go on a run to the Eastern Conference Final or dare I even say the Stanley Cup Final but like I said it is going to be a grind in the Eastern Conference it is so freaking hard to predict who's going to be where because you look I mean I don't envy either either anybody in the Atlantic or the Metro, you are going to have tough, tough games in the playoffs. It actually might be easier in the Metro. If it's, if somebody has to play Pittsburgh, I think I'd rather play Pittsburgh right now than Boston or Washington. Again, it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you think of the Maple Leafs? Do they finally get past the first round this year? I mean, it is, like I said, 2004. That is incredible. It is way too freaking long. When is this going to end for the Leafs? Let me know down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.